We often have the idea to repurpose old clothes. Maybe it is just to be kind of thrifty and use what we have and save on resources, or maybe it's because someone asked us to make them a memory quilt, or we want to make a quilt for ourselves that holds memory to us. I'm sure you've seen a lot of quilts made with like t-shirt logos on them, and then you see a lot of shirts made with button-up shirt material. Both are common and a lot of fun to use, but today in this video, I'm going to merge both of those together. I was given seven logo t-shirts and five button-up shirts to repurpose into a memory quilt. So what I did was I created a pattern to combine both of those styles together. In addition to the shirts you are going to use for this quilt, you will need a woven interfacing. I really prefer to use Pellon Shape Flex on my quilts, but any woven interfacing that you like to use will work. Just make sure it is woven. That's going to give your shirt fabric a fabric feel still. It won't get stiff. And the last thing you want is a quilt that isn't cuddly. You will also need some yardage for the background of the star block. I am using a dark gray fabric for this. So if you look at the quilt, you see the t-shirt blocks, and then you also see the star blocks. The star blocks are what contain the button-up shirt fabric. And the background on the stars is all this same dark gray fabric. That really helps tie everything in the quilt together because you find that same fabric in each star block. I think this is really important in making a quilt that can often have a lot of different patterns and designs going on flow together. It kind of unifies it all. Now, another thing you'll see is that each star is going to highlight one of the shirts I was given, one of the button up shirts. And every shirt is going to be seen in a star at least twice. There are some of the fabrics that I used in three stars to get enough to fill out the quilt. And then the shirt fabric is also going to be found in kind of the partial border around the stars. So you'll see that same fabric in the quilt in multiple places and that will also help tie everything together. After gathering all the shirts, it is time to plan out the quilt. And you may be thinking, Fallon, isn't that what a pattern is for? Yes and no. Remember, I was given seven t-shirts and five button-up shirts, but what if you were given a different number and variety of shirts? I want you to be able to make this quilt no matter what you are given. So I am gonna give you a lot of information here, but hopefully it will help you make this pattern no matter what you have on hand and no matter what size you want your quilt to be. After you gather all of the clothing that you want to use, so I have seven t-shirts and then I have my assortment of striped button-up shirts. I write down the t-shirts because those I know I'm going to need the full block on the quilt for. The other shirts, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be filling in with those. Now this quilt, you can make as large or as small as you want. Just know that each block is going to be 12 and a half by 12 and a half inches unfinished, so 12 inches finished. So I wanted a nice lap size quilt, so what I did was I drew out on graph paper four blocks by five blocks, because at 12 inches that would give me 48 by 60 inches, which is a nice size lap quilt. The next thing I did was I wrote in where I wanted my t-shirts to be. Now you could change this if you wanted to later when you get all your blocks together and start laying out, but it just helps me figure everything out. So once I got the t-shirts in place, all seven of them, I knew that I would need 13 star blocks. Now the star blocks will look like this. I didn't draw them in every single place, but you definitely could if you wanted to. I'll provide the formulas for you, but what this does is it's going to let you know how many of each size that you cut. Because for one block, for say this A block, so to make one star block of the A cuts, you'll need 
two 4.5 inch by 8.5 inch rectangles. When you plug the two into the formula here, so you need two for one block, you're going to have 13 star blocks here. You'll need to cut 26 from shirts. So that's how this works. That means you'll be able to make this quilt any size you want by just plugging in the number of blocks you need to the formulas. So like I said, I'll provide the chart for you so that you know how much of each item that you need to cut. So now that I know what I need to cut, I know to cut my t-shirt logos to 12 and a half by 12 and a half inches, I can start getting everything prepped. Now that we have a plan, we need to make our fabric. Make our fabric? Yeah, I guess, I guess that works. So for the logo shirts, I'm going to rough cut around the logo area. The easiest things to do is to cut along the seams, if there's seams along the side of the t-shirt. Some t-shirts don't have seams there, but just kind of cut the side that has the logo on it away from the front or back of the shirt, because some shirts do have the logos that people want to use on the back. Once you break down all the t-shirts you want to use, you will iron the fusible on to the back side of the shirt logo. So you'll want to iron it on per your interfacing's instructions. Make sure that interfacing is set really well on it because you don't want it to start peeling off. Once you get the interfacing on the back of the logo area, you're going to cut out the logo at 12.5 inches square. When I cut out the logo on a shirt, I have a 12.5 inch square ruler that helps me with this so much. And what I do is I line up the lines on the ruler with part of the logo on the shirt that really helps me make sure it's lined up straight. And then I just make sure that there is a quarter of an inch around the outside of the logo so that I don't sew into the logo too much. On some logos, they can be really big and get really close to the edge of that quarter inch. I just try to make sure it's even along each side. So then after getting all of the t-shirts prepped, I move on to the button-up shirts. And I kind of treat these in a very similar way. I cut along the seams on the shirt so that I can open up the fabric so that it lays flat. And then I press it really well and just cut it as if I'm using yardage or any other fabric. So I'm just going to cut the fabric that I need for the star blocks. Here is all the fabric you will need to create one star block. The only prep we will need to do is using these two fabrics here, the shirt fabric and the background fabric, to make half square triangles to create the star points around the center block here. So to do that, you're going to take one of the background squares and one of the shirt fabrics, and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from a diagonal going down the center. Now, I'm not going to draw a diagonal line. You can, and then sew a quarter inch from it on each side. I'm going to use the diagonal seam tape on my sewing machine to do that. So we're going to do that with four of these. So put them right sides together, all four of them, and sew that quarter inch seam along two sides of the diagonal. Now, I'm gonna do that on all four of these and I'm going to make sure the stripes are facing in the same direction on all of mine. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do this if you need all of your stripes going in the same direction and I'll show you what I mean after I sew these and cut them for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so here are my four half square triangles that I have prepped. You can see I have them sewn and they're all sewn in the same direction. The stripes are going the same direction. This just makes it really easy for me to sew them this way. I just look really close as I'm feeding them all through and chain piecing them and I can see all the stripes going in the same direction. So what I do once I get these sewn is I press them. Press, make sure that they're all nice and even. 
All right, and then I'm going to cut them along the diagonal. So right between those set of stitches that I sewn. So cut each one in half. And sewing four of these sets will get me the eight half square triangles I need to complete one star block. All right, so now I'm going to press the seams on all these half square triangles. So I'm gonna finger press it where the seam is going toward my background because my background's pretty dark here. Now you could just press it to whatever side is darker. Uh, that'll help you keep those seams hidden. So I'm gonna press these and they're actually laying pretty flat on their own here. That doesn't always happen. So you can see I have an easy press pen here. You really want these seams to lay nice and flat. It'll just make things a lot easier for you. So if they're not laying flat, putting a little bit of this easy press um, magic juice, a lot of people like to call it on here, will really help it lay even flatter. And then I'm going to put my, my clapper on them. So wait a few seconds once you put the easy press on. Add some heat, and then I'm gonna set my clapper on it. That'll just really set that seam really nicely. And while those are sitting there with the clapper on it, I'll press some more and do those same steps until I get all eight of them done. After pressing all of the half square triangles, it's time to trim them to 2.5 inch squares. So I'm just gonna line up my trim lock on here and trim this up. I'm just lining up my diagonal line. Now you can trim up your half square triangles however you prefer to trim half square triangles. You don't have to use the 2.5 inch trim lock, you can trim them your any preferred method you have. So I have this one trimmed, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim up all eight of them. Okay, I have all eight of the half square triangles trimmed, and so I'm just going to place them the way that they need to be on the block to create the star. I need to make a larger design board <laughs> for this block. It's kind of like squeezing it on here. But you can see the layout. This is how the star block will look. So I have the shirts creating the star, the background fabric, and then I have some more shirts creating the partial border around the star block. I really love how this block turns out. Now, one thing you may notice on here is I have the stripes in the center block going in one direction, and on each star point, they have one set that will kind of match the flow of those lines. And then you see another one goes in the other direction. So I am okay with that happening. I actually like the way it looks because for my side fabrics here, you can see the stripes go in different directions on them. If you wanna be very careful with your cuts, you can keep them all going the same direction if you want to, but that will take a lot of planning for you because when you lay this block out, you may turn this block in different directions. You may have the option where you wanna keep them all the same way, and that's fine too, but for me, I'd rather it just be random. Now, if you want your star to match up where all the stripes go together, I can show you how to do that. So let me set this to the side. And I have some extra fabrics here to show you how to accomplish that. Now, if you remember before, I had my stripes going in the same direction on all of my shirt fabrics. So if you want all your stripes to go the same direction on the star, you'll need to have two of your squares going the same direction and two going the op opposite direction. So for example, see I'm gonna have these horizontal and on this one vertical. And I'm going to put my background fabric right sides together and sew just as I did before. All right, so now that these are sewn, I'm gonna prep them just as I did before. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna cut them in half. 
I'm going to press them all. So after getting them all pressed, I'm going to trim them. All right, so I have the four half square triangles here all pressed. And remember, one set's going, the stripes are going in one direction, one set in the other. Now, if you want this for completing one block, you'll need to do two sets in the same direction. So let me lay out one of these center squares and show you how this will come together, creating a star block where they all all the stripes can match the center block going in the same direction. So see there, since I have one from each set, you can lay them out so that all the stripes are going in the same direction instead of on the other one that I have here where they go in different directions. And then this one will go here, this one here, and then you see all the star points, all the stripes match up. And if you want to do it this way, like I said, half of your shirt fabric needs the stripes going in one direction and half in the other. If you don't have striped fabric, it'll be much easier. Like I said, it looks really good this way. If you get them all lined up, it really looks like you're trying to match everything perfectly and you put a lot of care into it. But I think the star block also looks good if their stripes aren't matched up. I think it matches the other fabrics in the block that have stripes going in other directions, and I think it's okay either way. So there is how you can get the stripes to all line up if you want them to on your block. All right, so now all I need to do is sew this block together. The first thing I'm going to do is sew all the blocks for the star together. So I'll sew this row. I'll need to sew the star points on either side of the center block together. So lay them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam, press them, and then I can sew them to either side of the center block and then sew all the squares in the bottom row together, press the seams, and then bring the block together. After I sew the star block together, I can add on these border pieces. So I'll sew this large rectangle to the side, press the seam, sew these two together, press the seam, and then sew it together. The star block will be done. All right, so here is one finished star block. So you'll just make as many of these as you need to make your quilt whatever size you would like, plus mixing in any t-shirt blocks if you have them. Once all of your star blocks are finished, then you can lay out your quilt design. My quilt is going to be in a four by five block layout and I laid it out in a few different ways to get a design that I really like. Remember there's a lot of different fabrics here, a lot of different prints, but the background fabric, keep in mind, will help bring continuity to the quilt. I promise. Once you get it all sewn up, it's going to look great. So once you get a layout that you're happy with, sew it together. I like to sew each row together first. So I'll stack my blocks up in one row on a design board. I like to stick a pin in the top of the block if I need it to be facing a different way and it's not easy to tell what that might be when I move all the blocks over to the sewing machine. So sticking a pin in the top of the block really helps me know that that is the top of the block so I don't get things flipped around. So after sewing all the blocks in each row together, then I just bring all the rows together and make sure to press. At this point, the quilt top will be finished and then you will just have to baste your quilt using the method you like. I like to table the base my quilt. That means I lay all the layers of <laughs> the quilt out on a table and baste it there. I pin basted this time around. I'm really getting back into pin basting instead of spray basting. <sighs> spray basting is just so messy. So I use pins this time around. After getting the quilt basted, just quilt your quilt the way you would prefer. I did a few different things this time. Well, maybe not a few. I did two different things this time. The first thing I did was I sewed along the block seams on both sides to get the quilt held together really well. And then I did some extra detail sewing in the star block 
area. So I lined the star using some ruler work to keep everything straight and I really had a lot of fun doing that. I don't often add too much detail to my quilting when I quilt myself. I like to stick to just straight lines. Well, I'm still doing straight lines, but I was doing a little more fun with my straight lines this time around. It was kind of fun to branch outside of my comfort zone here. Then after getting all the quilting done, it was time to just bind the quilt. So just add a binding on however you like to do the binding on your quilt. Go ahead and do that. I prefer to sew the binding to the back of the quilt first then flip it to the front and sew it in place. I know a lot of people like to sew the binding to the front, flip it to the back and hand stitch it and all of that. Just use your preferred binding method here. All right, so after all that, the quilt is done and I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial to bring t-shirt quilts and button up shirts together. I have all the information for you down in the description of this video for sizing for the star block. So I hope you have fun making a quilt using this pattern. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.